So as she said, my name is Howard and today I will be taking you over uh, that Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's music, which is, which is exceptionally interesting to analyze because, because he, his particular characteristics is, is, we, has influenced classical music from, from when he died to now. So first of all, I would like to ask you a bit of a question. Mozart is very pop, is very, lots of examples of him in popular culture, for example, memes, movies, TV shows. Why do you, why do you think, why do you think that is? If it, if it's convenient for you, can you, can you please, could you please type in the chat? Why do, why do you think that Mozart has such a broad appeal in our popular culture. So if anybody has some ideas about why Mozart of all composers has the broadest appeal, to, broadest appeal towards everybody and everybody, and even people who don't understand classical music, why, why do you think that happens? Mozart's life is very short. That's one. That that is one. That is one point. Yeah. His 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 life his his life was incredibly brief. But one. But what? But one rebuttal we have for that is that is and was born a musician. Yes. One one a rebuttal I can have for that is Schubert. He Mozart died at thirty five. Schubert died at thirty one. And then when and then when Schub and then when Schubert was 29 he already wrote his ninth symphony when beethoven was 29 he only wrote his first symphony so if so if you know schubert he is he is almost as equally ten, as equally talented as mozart so now and there and there are some other and there are some other rebuttals i can have for this for example list incredibly prof, incredibly profound musician well that incredibly profound musician and Beethoven, who is sort of popular, but not, not nearly as broad as an, an appeal of Mozart. And everybody forgets about Bach. Bach, Bach, is, Bach. Bach is the epitome of modern classical music, but nobody, but nobody, there's no such thing as Bach in the jungle. The, Simpson, the Simpsons never asked Homer to, cover, to, to try to cover Bach. Ne that never happened. So what... So what I believe Mozart, why I believe Mozart is so popular is because of his broad appeal and his broad appeal is his, his composing style is very classical. And, this, and the way that the system is built directly influences, directly influences the aesthetics, not only in, not only back then, but also in modern periods. So this is what we're going to cover today. The classical, the classical period is not only found in music, but also found in the other arts and literature. It, the reason why it's called classical is because of, it, because of its influence of Greco-Roman, which is what, in, what, what, what in art history is known as classical. These ideals of proportion, the balance, ideals of proportion, the balance between, of the balance between different, ele different, different elements, such as these architecture, the you have the golden ratio, the golden ratio, as well as realistic figures like this. The balance of these, the balance of this, and the traditional aesthetic of beauty, which is heart, which is the harmony with the proportion and these realistic figures. That and the the harm the harmony and the harmony and the harmony between these elements, which all together create create a very real real realistic realistic sense of aesthetic preferences. You will, you will learn more about this when you, go, when, you do, when you go to advanced literature courses, arts courses, you will, for example, Dante's Divine Comedy, that this is an example of classical work because it's directly influenced from Ro Re Roman ideals. These pillars and this, these statues are all Greco-Roman imagery. And this applies to music as well. So this is, this aesthetic would translate to things like strict forms, which is an ap, which is an absolute, an a, which is an absolute way of of deciding the deciding the way how the music is constructed. 
the the phrases are the phrases and melody and music are to be naturally constructed and balanced so that is one phrase is a question another is an answer we'll go into that later tonality is usually mentorous that we meaning that harmon that harmon the principle of harmony is that we are rooted in a central key and then we take a journey around the other key and eventually come back into that key if you ever listen if you ever listen to my Bach my Bach seminar we have talked we have talked about this, this we talked about this it is his system Haydn Haydn as well as influenced by this so we'll go into this later and structure this is very important structure is always omnipotent and always present we always if we listen to if we listen to say we listen to a, a piece in in the classical period we nearly always know where we are we, 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 we nearly always have an idea. We, we won't usually get lost. And these strict forms are usually are synthesized into the Stogalat, which, which emphasizes a catchy melody, a very singable tune over a bass line, which is usually a drone, like bum, 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 bum. Quite boring. Very direct and limited use of poly polyphonic, which which again, if you went to our Bach lecture, which is very complex. So this style, it, it, this style, it, it, its goal is for simplicity, 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 balance, 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 and age and tradition and traditional and traditional principles of beauty rather than advanced philosophy stuff like that. So now, now into in. Off, uh, away from music art philosophy and, and back to Mozart. So as, we, as, as many of you know, he is a composer in the classical period of art. Uh, again, again, as many of you, uh, again, the reason, one of the reasons why he's so famous is because he's born to a music loving family and very much a prodigy. This, the, the, prodigy the prodigy element was, is probably what made Mozart so famous. He was basically he was in that time in Europe. In that time in Europe, he was basically a celebrity. He would go he would go tour tour around, go to the equivalent of talk shows and other and other fun. And then and then many people would have seen his performance. If if you ever studied Beethoven, his father his father was an alcoholic and was so and was. So influenced by Mozart's talent that he for, that he forced the young Beethoven to go perform and even and, and even changed his age of the posters just to try to make him as famous as Mozart, which he definitely which he definitely achieved, but not in the way that his father that Beethoven's father expected. He has his music is very mel melodic simplicity. His music is very straightforward, but but. What is even more astonishing is that he, he balanced the previous, the, the Bach, the counterpoint of Bach against this very simplistic style, which, create, which, which creates an incredibly dense, which, dense and engaging texture, which we'll go to later. And his most influential achievement, in my opinion, is his piano concert. There, there, are, 20, there are 27 numbered ones, of which he wrote 23. It, this, this is his most influential, his most influential style of composition that is still lasts today. And he composed he composed in many genre, many genres, as you can see here. Uh, one one thing one thing about Mozart's career is that he was he's what we call a, in, in modern twenty first century terms he is what we would be called what would be called a freelancer. Bach and Be Bach, Beethoven, and Haydn were they, they all worked for a family. They all they all composed for the sake of dedicate for the sake of dedications, commissions, and all this stuff. Mo and when Mozart was composing, he he usually composed for fun, especially his piano especially his piano concertos. These the piano concertos are usually they they were originally developed for entertainment. So, so he was so he so his music is not that serious. It's, uh, it's, it's very jocular and has a lot of humor in it, which we'll, we'll, again we'll get into later. This also goes to entertainment music, 
but he he wasn't not capable of writing serious music. For example, the Requiem Mass, his other masses, the sim the sim the symphonies, the the forty the thirty ninth through forty first are all incredibly serious and very dense. So his music. His, so what he does is he spans a broad genre in only thirty five years of composition, which it which is again why he is so much so popular in modern culture against it, against its like Bach, Beethoven, Liszt, and so on. Now, before we go on, but before we go any further, I would like to I would like to ask you about something known as sonata form. Uh, if you have studied music, if you have studied music, then you probably would have been exposed to something familiar. But I would, but I would still like to, I'd still like to see how, I'd still like, still like to see what people's opinions of this are. And we'll go into an analysis of this stuff later. Uh, if you would, uh, could you, uh, if you're aware of what this is or you want to guess, feel free, to, feel free, feel free to type in the chat. Okay, lot okay. Lots of people. Lots of people have lots of ideas, which is very, which is very good. So the sonata form. This title is very. The title is quite deceiving. In in sonata, this not only accompanies accompanies like solo sonatas for like the piano, violin, cello, flute, whatever. But it also encompasses things like the symphonies, the Mozart symphonies, the Haydn symphonies, the Beethoven symphonies, and many others. Uh, genres like concerti, concerti, quartets. They're all based around this very power, this very powerful way of communicating ideas. This last, this lasts throughout the last throughout the century. Say things, say things like. Uh, Beethoven again. Mahler was incredibly fun. Mahler used a lot of sonata form. All of his symphony, all of his symphonies incorporated in some way. Um, compo composers like uh, Liszt. Liszt, at, Liszt actually was Liszt developed his own form, the tone poem, which we'll get into a bit later. But but if you follow the Austro-German branch of composition after the Romantic period, they diverge. Uh, San San in his uh, organ symphony, lots of this. So this is so as you can see, this is very powerful. So the 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 person who synthesized sonata form was this man Haydn. So the sonata form originally developed developed from the Baroque binary form, which is which is A B A B form. There is one thing, one little tune, another little tune, and they they contrast. So something like that. So the two of the, the so the conflict in the conflict in binary form is that the two of them are put side to side. But what Haydn does is that he put this in, so as a section, the most important section of the sonata, sonata form, what we call the development. They they develop the subject. They develop the two contrasting ideas, the A and the B. They change it. And then, and then over the course of over the course of the piece, the, the the two would have completely changed into different characters and different forms, which is what is important. As you can see here, somebody said three parts. Yes, I, there's an exposition which introduces the A and the B, and and then what, instead of a direct just a juxtaposition, there is what we call a transition, and then and then in the classical period, the keys would also change. So the so the one here symbolizes the tonic, which the internality is the center of gravity, where, where everything starts and where everything comes back. But then the B is in what we call in the major key, what we call the dominant, the dominant key, which is which which is the which is up the circle of fifth. So there is a contrast. There, there's a contrast in mood. It, in mood, in character with the key. If it's minor, it would, it, would, it would either move to the dominant or what we call the relative major. That is the major key with the, the corresponding major key with the same notes as the tonic minor. So they, they would be in different keys to provide even more contrast between different subjects themselves. In the, cl in the classical period, this would usually be repeated. 
like as follows. And then this, the development, as I've said, the most important section is to take the two themes, they fuse it together, they combine them. It is unstable, it is un the, the, ton the key is unstable. Neither when you move into the tonic, nor, the, nor whatever other key it is in. The, the keys would fight, the themes would fight, everything would fight until, until the recapitulation where the first theme come where the first theme comes back in the again in the tonic. And but then and then the second theme come back, but 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 it's now in the tonic again. So the the conflict has been fought and won, won over by theme A here. The B and the first in a conflicting key after a bunch of fighting, they come to a consensus, they agree on the first key. Uh, if, it's a minor, if it's a minor key, this says it would end in the minor, but that's not always the case. It, it is allowed for the sonata form to end in the, if you end in tonic, you can also end in what we call the parallel major, which, it, uh, which is the major key with the, which, with the same tonic. So for example, this was a D minor. In D minor, this would go to F major, Working out conflict between major and minor, back to D minor, and then either D minor or D major. So that so that so so there are two conflicts here: Cons, conflict of the keys and conflicts of the themes. And as you uh, and the objective with this is for contrast and dramatic development. So now I will. So now so now I have now done with my talking. And now, I'm going to, and now I'm going to show you his very famous 40th symphony in the key of G minor, so it's minor key. So, so, I, would like, so I would like you all to, li to listen along, first, first of all, enjoy the music, but then also try to notice the conflict. Uh, since, since, many, since a lot of you might not have approached another form before, I, have, I will give an analysis of my slideshow here. I will scroll along as the music progresses. Just, uh, just read it or try to do it. Try to do it yourself. Both is both is fine. Please enjoy.
and that is that is the conclusion of the movement. Uh, has everybody enjoyed that? Good. So, so listening listening to that symphony there, there is so there is so much going on. Uh, it, the 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 still gallant of not emphasize that much emotional de emotional development but mo but mo mozart as you can hear this the ending the ending in g the contrast between the b flat original b flat second subject and the now g minor second subject is so much more di it's so much more different there's a different the mode change and tonic change so so now it's much lower more sub more subsided and much and very tragic. So that so that is the purpose of the sonata form to, illu to illustrate the difference between theme one G minor, theme two B flat major, to, to throw to thrust them against each other in full force, and then to conclude it and subside it in this case in deep mournful tragedy. So 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 it Mozart you so back to forms. He, he his he used four major ma four major forms in his in in his work that in his like in his chamber work and orchestral work that you that uses as that uses a sonata form that uses this exposition. So there's a solo sonata with instruments like the piano, violin with some small accompaniment. I pretty sure I'm pretty sure he wrote a few, but the piano sonatas are more famous. The concerto, I've talked about it. I've talked about this. It's a solo instrument and a large ensemble, an orchestra. Symphonies. This, we just heard this 40th symphony, which is an or which is an orchestra with many sections, usually in four movements: the sonata, the sonata, mov sonata movement here, a slow movement, a minuet, which is a dance, which is a dance, the most the most pre prevalent dance form, as we've gone over this. From the Baroque, from the Baroque era, which we've gone over, and the and the string quartet and the string quint and the string quintet, which is an ensemble two violin, viola, cello, uh, optional doubling for a quintet and or a piano, also in four movements. So the first movement of a classical of a classical piece is usually a sonata, is usually a sonata movement, and then a slow movement, a slow movement at a slope at a more subsided tempo to cool the tension down and lighten the and lighten the drama, and then a and then a small lively jovial dance that that j that jives up that j that jives up the character, and then a faster and a faster sonata form slash rondo. It's both are both there. You can see examples of both that that usually con that concludes the piece in a high note. Now, on, so on, so let's go into more specifics. So, so the piano, so, so the piano sonatas, the piano sonatas are an important part of Mozart's ode. Uh, that that he his in, his innovations originally stem from Haydn sonatas, the Haydn sonatas, which have a similar characteristic. So with things, so with the sonata movement, sonata movement here, uh, there are. His most innovative sonata is definitely his eleventh in A major, which is where I would recommend you to start. So, th so this uh, this is a peculiarity. He he does there is no he does not use any sonata form movements throughout. The first movement is not his first movement is the longest is actually a theme and variations. So they take a simple theme, and so on, so on, so on, and then drags it out into many, drags out into many different variations styles of playing it. Uh, the second movement is actually a second movement's light minuet, which is similar and characteristic to the first. But then the third, but then the third is the strange, strangest. It, it's, it's the famous rondo alla turca. It's a rock. It's a rondo, which is a faster, so not with a faster style, with also with two themes, but much quicker, much quicker, and with less development. It's actually in the minor, so A major. So the overall key is A major, but it, most of it, the bulk of it's in A minor until the end is in A major. 
So this is the strangest sonata, but all, but all the rest I have highlighted here are all very good. You should go listen to them. I recommend you to start with the 11th, then, pro then probably the 16th, and, and then maybe either the 13th, the 10th, the 13th, or the 15th. Or, uh, and, the, and the double sonata here. So how, so how do you use this catalog? You, you can take a screenshot of, you can take a screenshot of this, the catalog number here and then the piece name. The highlights is what I would recommend you to start, the yellow highlight is what I recommend you to start with. And then the blue, and then the uh, blue state highlight is what I recommend you to go with what my topics. So on, onwards. So as we have, so, so I have, what I've just played for you is the 40th Symphony in G minor here. And then the, and then the introduction, the introductory piece I used was the 41st, what we call the Jupiter Symphony here. The, these these all uh, these all are all fairly standard, but the last three here is what I would like to highlight. So Hoffner, Linz, and Prague. It's the, it's their own trilogy, and then E flat G E flat G minor C major is another trilogy. So with this, Mozart gets experimental. Now the 40th is his most chromatic symphony. In the third movement minuet, there's a passage where Every single note on the chromatic scale is played but one, and that one is G, the tonic. So he, ex so he experiments with going away from the traditional tonal cycle, saying that G is the most important note. G is the most important note. We need to move on G. He doesn't do that. He, he fools around with us by using every single note that's not, that's not G. And then the 41st is his most, con the 41st is a very, it's a very contrapuntally based symphony. The four, the four movements all have incredible integration. As, and, then, and then the contrapuntal element, as you can see here, is a five voice invertible, is, is, uh, is, is a four, four voice, actually, sort of four voice, four voice, five melody, invertible fugato, fugato in the coda. So these four themes, all of these five themes all appear throughout the, the red the red is the main sub the red is the main subject the, and then the the green the green here is a figure is a figure that's part of the transition the 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 blue is another figure that's part of the transition and then orange and yellow the orange and yellow are the second are the second group of subjects are the the green here the orange and the yellow here they they are their own couple so i I'm going to go play the coda to see the fantastic counterpoint, the fantastic verbal counterpoint that Mozart uses. If you have been to my bot collector, you will be familiar with, with what that is. <laughs> So through the integrate, through the integration, this this does not this does not sound like a complicated organ fugue in the manner of Bach. It's very clear, very very clear, very very balanced in development. But there are still five five melody five voice five voices, but four vo four voices five melodies but five subjects. And then invertible counterpoint throughout, meaning that they sw the subjects switch between the voices. Like if somebody did something appeared in cellos, now they would go to the second violins, first violins go to the violas, all sorts of mixing up and jumbling ups. So this is very so this is probably Mozart's greatest sing greatest single symphony ever. And now on account now speaking of counterpoint, I would like to plug my I would like to plug my article that I that I, that I write for a that I write for a web forum that a web forum that I participate in 
It's on Shostak it's on Shostakovich. If you have time after the seminar, please go and please go and read it. I would appreciate I would appreciate you look I would appreciate you looking at my stuff. Thank you. Now back from that self cheesy self ad, the concertos. As I have gone into before, these are these are these are abs these are absolutely phenomenal through through the clarity of development. His 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 the most recognized are the twentieth, twenty first, twenty third, and twenty fourth. Which all cre which all create a which all create a sense of unity with within the concerto structure that that pervades the piano's clear the, the piano is very clear. I'll go into how they do that. The clarinet concerto is also very famous very famous especially with slow movement. Violin concertos you might be aware of this and the and the symphonic concertant very famous. So. The, so now, as Mozart had, uh, had greatly affected the development of the concerto. So, so from the Baroque, from a Baroque ensemble here, we have a viol, a very long recorder, a transversal flute. The, the, this to this, a piano and orchestra. What do you think, what do you think is the greatest, what, go and type in the chat, what do you think is the greatest difference between, between like this group ensemble and this piano and orchestra? What do you think? What do you think about that? Okay. So what? So that? So what he do, what he does is that what what he does the pian the piano the piano here the, the, this the piano has been removed from the ensemble. In the Baroque, we have in the, in the Baroque we have something called a concerto grosso, which is a group of which is a which is a in a ritornello, a so a, a solo passage here, another tutti solo tutti something like in a, in a binary form. So, but Mozart explains an extended sonata form, which is a normal sonata form but with more stuff. There, first of all, he does a double exposition, starting with the orchestra, and then the piano. The piano alone does the piano alone does and does it its own exposition. So, and what this does is it is that it displays the contrast between the clear voicing of the piano, and then and the and then the very and and the very multi, the multitude of voices in the orchestra part. So there's contrast between these these two elements and then the rest of the sonata form is pretty standard the piano and the orchestra engage in dialogue with which is a lot of drama and coherence the fight there's a third fight now the fight between the piano and the fight between your uh, fight between the ensemble so lots of drama and then after the composition there's what we call a piano cadenza which in the rock which in not rock the classical period what mozart does is he Often improvises it. He makes it up on the spot. There is, there, it does not happen twice, because because he is primarily composing for entertainment. The the piano the, the art of the piano cadenza is very important. Is very important to him. And then the and then the co, and then the coda, which concludes the piece, and then and then completes the character arc of the movement. And then the and the. And then I would like this is most clear, well demonstrated in his twentieth piano concerto, which I, which, one of my highlights. The, the first movement is very dark and very stormy. There, there are a, there are a few sub there are many subjects that he uses. The, but the main the but the main subject is very subdued, but the, and then the second immediately comes out in its brightness, prom in the piano promising a promising a half. Promising a happy return, a jubil jubilance, but it never, but it never achieves this because the D minor immediately brings it down into a deep, deep, deep lament. The second movement, the second movement is in B flat, so a very relaxed, very ro and ro romantic. Its its design is evocative of a, cal of a calm from the storm. So it just got from the big fight, the very tragic fight, with the D minor one winning. And then immediately the, the, B, the B flat takes us on a meditative, contemplative journey that, it, that 
re that relaxes us. And the, and the, after that, there is a faster rondo, which, uh, which but with that then finishes in D major. So the entire character arc of the concerto is complete. There is there there is a there is a there is an initial hero's journey that hero's journey that challenges the mentality solos and orchestra, and then a meditation a meditation here when then there's relax that new energy the breakout of the mold, and then finish in the major key with finishing the major key which which gives this intact a happy ending. And then the last form I talked about is the string quartets, which is the most famous is the Haydn quartet. Is the Haydn quartet? Haydn quartets. There's six of them, all dedicated to Joseph Haydn. Joseph Haydn, Mozart's Mozart's uh, idol, if you will. These all these all employ very very cheeky developmental and contrapuntal structures, especially the 19th in C major, the what we call the dissonance quartet. What he, he, the, so the opening adagio to this quartet is incredible. Is it does not fall fall the traditional C major. It goes into very, it's very ambiguous. We do not know what key center is in, and it even uses a prototype of what we call the D S C H motif, which is this thing, which is this little gesture that Shostakovich often often uses, and so Mozart accidentally accidentally predicted the future. Which is another reason for you to go read my article. Please do that. So with so with this so with all these forms, he synthesized a more complete version of the sonata form. Now, going into the second part of the seminar here, melody. What do we? What? Why? Uh, one of the other reasons we find Mozart so attractive. What do you think of how? What do you think of his melody? Uh, if anybody wants to have a guess in the chat, how how does Mo, how does Mozart like to develop his melody? Yes. So so here is a quick video. So so here is a quick video I've found to il to illustrate help you illustrate some of the principles of melody. And how and what, what and what and, and what makes good melody and what makes Mozart's melody so what makes Mozart's melody so memorable? I know this is Tchaikovsky. We'll, we'll go into that in a later time, but the principles are the same. So, so please have a look. So let's go. We hear a musical line in terms of motion moving up and down, high and low, rising and falling. A musical line has movement, and that's why traditional notation is such a useful depiction of what the music is doing. Take this melody, for example. I think it's an excellent depiction of how we hear movement in music as it pushes up, 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 and then falls back down again. But also, we hear a melody as having some kind of internal logic. It's not just one note after the next, note, 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 note. These notes are connected somehow in one long line. We don't hear this. And think, ah yes, eight independent notes in a row. No, we hear it as one line, eight notes, but connected together as one thought. The notes are somehow connected to each other, one to the next, so that they make more sense together than they would on their own. So to summarize that, we hear melody as a line which goes through a kind of musical motion. Simple, right? Remember that, we'll come back to it later. Now, I've mentioned this before, but humans are extraordinarily good at empathy. We are able to share somewhat in other people's grief, joy, or even more complex emotions. And we share in these emotions simply by watching them or being around them. 
There's no logical reason for us sharing in someone else's sadness if we have no reason to be sad ourselves. And yet, we do feel a great deal of empathy for one another. Perhaps you can see where I'm going with this. I think something strangely similar happens with music. Just as we can empathize with another person, we can, in a funny kind of way, empathize with music too. To have a deficit in empathy is often a symptom of being a narcissist, a sociopath, or a psychopath. And I think Shakespeare made this connection between music and empathy when he writes in The Merchant of Venice, the man that hath no music in himself, let no such man be trusted. So how does music... Okay, so this video is quite long, so I'm, so I'm going to stop it there. But so, so, uh, so as you have, so as, so as this person describes it, the, pur uh, pur the purpose of, the, pur the purpose of good melody, melody is to have emotion, is to have emotion, character arc, char character arc, and a, 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 a musical line, a journey, as well as mo mo most importantly, empathy, and empathy and emotion. It goes into more stuff about Tchaikovsky later, but I'm so, but I'm going to this, so I'm going, but I'm going, to, but I'm going to demonstrate that this in terms of what Mozart does. So, so unlike Tchaikovsky melodies. But like they so they soar. They go and they go. There's lows, and then music jumps up, like the Romeo and Juliet fantasy overture. It goes to all so it journeys into all sorts of places. But Mozart stay. But Mozart stays in the center more. So, but so the simplicity of so the simplicity of of many of his movements is it. Is another thing is it also gives a sense of melody. It, it's not it's not a tr it's not that traditional. It's not not it might not be a good melody to everybody, but 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 I'm going to demonstrate so his simple but beautiful melodies here. There is still a great journey. There's a bum bum starts low and then goes back high and then down here. So so there is still so there is still an arc, but it but it's a very solemn arc. And and then as you see, there's balance. So there's the first phrase bum 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 question and answer bum 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 bum. Um, question and answer about these two these questions the question and the answer complement each other and then these two phrases here complement each other so there so this is so this is what so this is as you as i have so this is very classical there's balance everything comes in pairs and the, the, and then this is most likely to appeal appeal the most appeal to many people so, so another example here is his, requ his, his requiem, uh, the lacrimosa. So have a listen. 
simple lacrimosa melody here to a, an ex, a great degree of contrapuntal combination. So first the bass enters, then the tenor voice, the alto voice, and the soprano voice, and with the, with the orchestra doing its own thing in the back. So, the, so these simple melodies are very, are, can be subjected to great contrapuntal combination, like seen in the Requiem, as well as the, the Jupiter. So, so now, now on to opera, which is where many of his great melodies, where many of his great melodies shine. So here, so his most famous three is probably Figaro, Don Giovanni, as the, the meme for the, the meme, there's a meme for the beginning. If you ever think about procrastinating, remember that Mozart wrote the Don Giovanni overture the night of the morning of premiere. And uh, Die Zauberflotte, the magic flute. So, the, so the three, these three form the core of his, from the core of his operatic works. There are a few others. This is not. This is not the. This is not the only stuff. There's there even more. But but there there are two. There's two major operatic traditions that Mozart follows. The first the first is the Italian tradition, which is something like Figaro, where it's. Formal structure, there's arias, choruses, and there's what I call bel canto, which is beautiful singing, comedy and lightness, and then a, dra a sense of drama. So, it's, so, it, the, so the Italian style is usually for entertainment compared, entertainment and then the drama compared to the German style, which is more, more formal. There, there's a lot more dialogue and, and then, the see, and then the theater is emphasized more than the music, something that Wagner often uses, which we will go, which is part of a future future seminar. So now, so now, on, so now that so now that you are familiar with melody, I'm going to I'm going to play for you the famous Queen of the Night aria from the Magic Flute. Here, uh, this is this is probably that this is probably the most well known well known one from by uh, Diana Damral. Okay. Try to the melody. So here, apart from going insanely, so for, for having the soprano go insanely high, there, there is a great, there is a, there is a dramatic line, a grandiose scale. There's not dialogue in this example here, but, that, but again, but again, there is an, there is an arc. There's a minor and then the major that illustrates the queen of the, the here, the queen of the night's character from, Queen of the Night's character soaring, soaring above here, soaring above, telling, telling her daughter to murder somebody. And then now we move on to the end of Mozart's life. Yeah. <laughs> he, is, he is 
known for dying, having died very early at age 35 in squalid conditions. And he is buried in an unmarked pauper's grave where we don't know where, don't know where he's buried. So in the uh, composer's corner in the, Vienna, in, the in the cemetery in Vienna, there is a bust of Mozart to, uh, to honor his composi compos com composition and, and give him the final place of rest. He did not finish his Requiem, which I just, which is a fantastic work. I just played, I just played, I just played. And that is his last, last testament in music, which is very, which is very sad, which is very sad considering that we don't know what he could, we don't know how he could have changed the history of music if he lived on for another 30 years and then affected uh, the romantics as, you know, as what Beethoven did. So his influences include, of course, Beethoven, who, who wrote out, man, wrote many cadenzas for the piano concertos. He wrote, he completed them, other than these compositions. And then his early period is, has lots of Haydn and Mozart influences, like the, light, like the lightness, a bit of the Haydn, Haydn humor, and so on. Schubert, his fifth symphony is based upon the 40th, and he, and he adored Mozart for the, for the, for the gracious melody which Schubert needed for he was a, for he was a songwriter. The, the gracious melody as well as the contrast. And the neoclassical composers like Stravinsky, uh, a part of Ravel's, a part of Ravel's and part of Prokofiev's. So, so the, ne so the neoclassicists also, also loved the, the straightforwardness of the Greco-Roman ideals. So after the Romantics came, part, part of the modern composers decided that they wanted to go back to the foundations of music. So Stravinsky, the, his violin concerto, very Mozart-esque. Ravel, the piano concerto, was directly based upon Mozart's piano concerto. Did lots of fun, quirky bits, uh, cadenza, cadenzas, and the second movement is gracious and moving. And uh, Prokofiev and Prokofiev and Shostakovich. That Prokofiev has his first symphony, the classical symphony, has a has a, a tr his, his gravitates to Mozart's cl classicism, as well as uh, Stravinsky. Uh, not Stravinsky, Shostakovich. Some of his middle period works that that has a lot of lightness and gaps, and and so and so on as a with a light texture, like the sort of string quartet. Uh, so so now to so now to, I don't I don't think we have time for this so I'm going I don't have time for this.